very concerning, said a biosafety expert from Rutgers. He testified before Congress just last summer in the wake of lab incidents at federal agencies involving anthrax, smallpox, and a deadly strain of avian influenza. And yet, we're supposed to be concerned about the people who don't get vaccinated. They're the threat to us. Not the people who are carelessly, recklessly experimenting with these kind of dangerous things like smallpox, anthrax, a deadly strain of bird influenza. They're using this to weaponize it. But that was not what they said they were doing at Tulane University. They were creating a vaccine for something that is only endemic in Thailand. It has been found in Australia. In Australia, it has a 20% mortality rate. Where it's endemic in Thailand, it has a 50% mortality rate. Compare that to measles, for which they are demanding that we give up our right to informed consent, demonizing parents who decide that they want to vaccinate gradually or not vaccinate at all. Measles has a 0.1%, 0.1% mortality rate. That's one-tenth of 1%. This particular disease that they carelessly let out at Tulane has a 500 times greater mortality rate than measles. Do you see anybody in the mainstream press concerned about this? Do you see them calling for mandates to control this kind of bioweapons experimentation, bringing in dangerous diseases that are not endemic in the United States in order to make weapons out of them so they can then sell us vaccines that they create, so they can then force us to take those vaccines? Listen to how this thing got out. This is a story that's been developing since last November. First, there were two monkeys that showed signs of infection. February 22nd, they just put down the second monkey that came down with this. They thought they had cured it, but it came back. Now, these two monkeys that came down with the disease were outside of the level three biosafety lab. That's a biosafety lab that's next to the highest level of biosafety. They have negative air pressure, a lot of controls. They said no animals come out of that area alive. So they were very surprised to see monkeys outside of the labs come down with this disease, especially the fact that these monkeys were in separate cages outside. Even more important is the fact that these cages each are about half the size of a football field. So it covers a fairly large area. They were very concerned because Tulane University said, well, we've done some preliminary testing and we don't see anything. They need to do over the area of just one of those cages, 100 samples at least. So they should have taken 200 samples of the soil. They only took four. That's the kind of level of care. Yet we shouldn't be concerned, and the media certainly is not concerned, about the release of these bacteria at Tulane. No, we need to be concerned about the people who don't get their kids vaccinated for measles. USA Today reports the time between exposure to this bacteria and the development of symptoms can range from one day to many years. According to the CDC, though, most human infections do not cause symptoms. That should not make us feel better. The fact that it is asymptomatic, which means that you don't show symptoms, but you can still spread it to others, is very concerning. That makes it even more dangerous. They go on to say several countries have studied using the bacteria as a bioweapon because strains can be obtained from the environment and engineered to be resistant to multiple antibiotics. It's also significant that this was Tulane University. It was just last August as we were seeing the beginnings of the giant Ebola outbreak in Africa. What are the U.S. biowar researchers doing in the Ebola zone? And these bioweapons researchers were from Tulane University. The same people that just brought this bacteria from Thailand here so they could weaponize it, so they could make a vaccine for it, and then accidentally released it into the environment. Whoops. They were accused of doing the same thing at the beginning of the Ebola outbreak. This began in Sierra Leone. It is still raging in Sierra Leone. It is the only country that hasn't gotten it under control yet. The vice president was just quarantined last week for Ebola. They demanded Tulane get out of the country. They were very concerned. They believed they had something to do with the outbreak of Ebola. Was it carelessness like we see here in Louisiana? Or was it deliberate? For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight.
another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The Pro Pure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must-have for every modern, independently-minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your Pro Pure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-888-253-3139. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and could not be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosylcobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. He escaped South American native tribes using them. He fought Nazi strongmen on top of them. And now actor Harrison Ford, AKA Han Solo, Indiana Jones, and Jack Ryan has crash landed a prop plane on a golf course and he survived and nearly walked away. Stay sharp, there's two more coming in. They're gonna try and cut us off. Besides, I know a few maneuvers, we'll lose them. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. That's right, yesterday on March 5th, 2015, Harrison Ford took off in his Ryan PT-22 plane, which is a two-place open cockpit trainer plane manufactured during World War II to train U.S. military pilots. It was built in 1942 and has a 160 horsepower radial engine and a top speed of 131 miles an hour. It was retired by the military after the war. Immediately upon takeoff, Ford had engine trouble and had to immediately make a U-turn and turn around back to the airport. Unfortunately, he didn't make it that far. As you can see, he crashed on the eighth hole of the Pinmar Golf Course near Santa Monica Airport. 53178, engine failure, immediate return. Ryan 178, run a 21, clear to land. Witnesses say he made a nosedive on the eighth hole tee and proceeded to glide into a crash landing. And I've got to say, when you take an aerial look over where he crashed, had he not made it to the golf course, he could have easily crashed into a number of houses and most likely died. We've seen plenty of plane crashes out there where small prop planes crash into houses and nobody makes it out. So he was very lucky in this regard. Sir, the possibility of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 3,720 to 1. Never tell me the odds. Unfortunately, his cockpit was not made of carbonite. Oh, they've encased him in carbonite. He should be quite well protected. If he survived the freezing process, that is. My old car is he? Did he survive? He was pulled from the crash by several golfers, luckily one of which was a surgeon. He had a cut in his face that was very deep. Witnesses say a swath of skin was missing and there was blood dripping down his face. He was taken to UCLA Medical Center in critical condition, but has since been upgraded to moderate. His son Ben tweeted this. At the hospital, dad is okay, battered, but okay. He is every bit the man you would think he is. He is an incredibly strong man. Ford's quick thinking and abilities reminded me of another plane crash that happened back in 2009 in January, and that was that of Captain Sully Sullenberg. 
He made a crash landing into the Hudson River after experiencing engine trouble. His quick thinking and training allowed Sullenberg to make a picture-perfect landing on the Hudson River with 155 souls on board. His landing was touted as a miracle. But I don't think it was a miracle. It was luck. And what is luck? Luck is the intersection of preparation and timing. And that's what you have to ask yourself out there. Are you prepared in life? Are you a concealed carry handgun owner who maybe will be in the right place at the right time when somebody decides to go on a crazy shooting rampage? Are you prepared if the stock market crashes? Are you prepared if society breaks down and there's riots? What are you doing in life? Are you awake? These two men are examples of people who are awake and prepared. And with luck and a little bit of preparation and timing, they were able to both make the best out of a bad situation. The world's going through a lot of changes right now and sides are being drawn. Are you going to be on the side of freedom and individual liberty or on the side of a collectivist, politically correct tyranny? Remember stories like these that showcase the dynamic, quick thinking, prepared human spirit that refuses to submit. This is Rob Dew reporting for Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. If you are watching this report on YouTube, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Your username can be shared with up to 20 people. That's 20 Info Warriors for the price of one. And if you are a member of PrisonPlanet.tv, may the force be with you. I have you not. What? Yeah! You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. That's it for the show tonight. Be sure to tune in Monday at 7 p.m. Central. And in the meantime, head over to PrisonPlanet.tv and pick up a subscription. Your username and password can be shared with up to 20 people at the same time. You're getting instant access to over 18 years worth of content. Check it out. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.